Craig Duncan is here. He runs Rare, and the story at Rare for the last few years has been Sea of Thieves. It continues to be. You've got it here again at E3. It's an incredible game when you first jump into it, but a lot of the complaints, obviously, was that it, you know, you could see a finite amount of content in a short amount of time when it launched. So I'm wondering, you know, how was the mood when you launched and you saw critics out there and players just the complaints start coming in? Well, what we see, and it's interesting with critical and, and consumer re reception, particularly when you build something new. Yeah. So what we actually seen was just across the board. Yeah. So either we had people telling us, like, they absolutely love Sea of Thieves and we've made the best game ever created. Yeah. Which I love, like, that's great, and I'll, I'll lap that up. Yeah. And then we had people going, this game's terrible, it's the worst game ever created. And the reality is, neither of those two no. things are true. What we did is we built something very unique and very different. You know, people wanted maybe a different version of what they had in their head Sea of Thieves was. But what I felt really proud of is I think the team delivered on a vision that was genuinely unique to anything else out there. How much of the new stuff and the stuff that keeps going into this live living game was a pre-mapped idea and how much of it was reactive to feedback and the community getting involved? I think like genuinely see if these wouldn't be the game today if we hadn't have gone through the journey we've been through in the first year. It was always our intention to launch what we thought was the core of the Sea of Thieves experience and add to that. The reality is we had a lot of post-launch plans that actually when we launched, we got a lot of different feedback, so we ended up tearing up and doing different things. I know the uh, the development community in the UK is relatively tight. Yep. You guys all kind of know each other. And Hello Games went through a lot of stuff with No Man's Sky, and there were a lot of comparisons, and myself included, comparing Sea of Thieves to No Man's Sky and the way that it launched and kept building and okay. growing. Yeah, yeah. But No Man's Sky has also turned everything around and become this juggernaut. And I'm wondering if your team ever talks with the Hello Games folks, or you ever have them over, or <laughs> you guys go out for tea or pints or whatever. You're right. We tend to talk to most teams, and you know the consistent things I hear about any service-based games are you launch and you don't know what you don't know yes. and when you do anything at scale with lots and lots of players and that's true for every size of developer too it feels like totally so the whole like hey we launched and there were issues like it's a pretty consistent theme no matter who you are so the thing is for us it was about you know knowing that was the case so how do we be reactive how do we get on things how do we we make sure because when you hit unprecedented scale and you yeah. have more people playing your game and your servers than yes. ever before yeah. no matter how many you know betas and technical alphas you you do that's just the thing and it's the thing you've got to go deal with but then it's really about how do you you know we've done a lot of great work in the studio about just being very open and transparent with our plans and just being very committed to evolve the game but ultimately it's still it's still the sea of thieves that we love and we're passionate about it and we want to make sure everything we do stays true to what sea of thieves is what's changed and what is uh, you know the fan base of Sea of Thieves going to be looking forward to in the future? What's changed is we just released the anniversary update at the end of April. Yep. I think we've had our kind of biggest month since launch. So anniversary, we bought two brand new things. And anniversary is the kind of culmination of the first year of updates to Sea of Thieves. Anniversary, we brought in the arena, which is our competitive mode, which is Sea of Thieves meets competition. And we brought in a lot of changes to the adventure part of the game with the introduction of Tall Tales, which is now narrative adventure in a shared world. Stuff uh, that we have come to expect out of Rare from days past, right? You've, you've put a lot of that kind of effort back into the game. Even more so, I, th I think what we've done is evolved what storytelling can be in a multiplayer environment. So Wonderful. the great thing about Sea of Thieves is it's you and your crew going on adventures together, but it's how can we make you feel like you're in a Goonies movie or an Indiana Jones movie or something where you're on this epic adventure, but you've always got that threat that another crew might be on the horizon and how does that make your adventure play out differently. We've seen phenomenal engagement with Sea of Thieves since launch and we have an amazing community. Yeah. Like we have a super engaged community that in a lot of ways hold us accountable, which is really good, but in a lot of other awesome ways really advocate what Sea of Thieves is about. To your point about you know things like critical reception, it's fascinating to me that everything's always about a point in time. Yes. So whether you've got launch or whether you've it, got... It makes our job very tough, and I say this all the time in the reviews, because these games change so quickly, and they're, like you can't have a job reviewing these things 
if you only review one game and you stay with it for a thousand hours. Totally, and that's the bit where I don't envy what you have to do, which yeah. is, you know, for us, it was always like, okay, let's launch the core of Sea of Thieves, it's the heart of the experience, and evolve it as we go. Yeah. And then we get a year later, we launch Anniversary. Anniversary, literally, the critical reception was amazing. Actually, a few companies re-reviewed us, which was nice. Yeah. It's funny, because you read all the what people write, and they're like, oh, Sea of Thieves has evolved massively over this last year. And some of it's a little bit like with an almost surprised tone. Yeah. But for us, it's like, well, that was that was always We're the intention. We're not sleeping yeah. over it. Yeah. Totally. Like that's that's always what we set out to do. So it's, you know, uh, uh, for speaking on the behalf of the critics, out, this yeah. is new for us too, course, right? It's yeah, a yeah. new thing. This emerging, you know, stay in a game forever kind of thing. I mean, it's not that new, but it's it's still relatively new. I'm wondering though, with all of this experience, the ups and downs of Sea yep. of Thieves, if this is a a type of game that Rare wants to make again, and if there are other genres, like could we ever see like a Conker's Bad Fur Day, you know, games as service platforming adventure or something? Like it's really about the service aspect, the evolving aspect, fit in with the theme of what Sea of Thieves was. So Sea of Thieves, it was all about going on adventures with your friends, meet different players when you're out in the world. Kind of only makes sense for a pirate game in the way we've designed it. That only works for Sea of Thieves. And then ultimately, being a pirate, there is an endless amount of content and stories we can deliver into a pirate world. Right, right. So what you're telling me is you have thought of other things, but you can't think of anything better than Sea of Thieves right now. What? Well, <laughs> sea of Thieves makes sense as a service, an evolving game yeah. where you could... And it's not even about people playing Sea of Thieves all the time and forever. Yeah. Like, I think it's okay for people to play Sea of Thieves, go away and come yeah. back in a month when we introduce a new set of adventures or a new aspect to the arena. Like, I think that's fine. Or just play it just to go and sail with your buds and just catch up, and I'm sure that happens every night. Totally, and, yeah. and, it's, and it's about, like, you're right, there's so many games out there. For us, it's about making people love Sea of Thieves and yeah. turning them from players into fans. Awesome. Like, that's our goal. Yeah. The one thing that I will say as a diehard Rare fan, and okay. I love this company and thought it was an Me amazing too. win for Microsoft to buy it, but we want more rare games. And when you're working on something as big as this, does it make it harder to make more rare games? More's interesting, because yeah. like, there's always things cooking at Rare, and there's always ideas we've got, and there's always things cooking. But ultimately, making games isn't getting any easier. Yeah. Like Making games, teams need to be bigger, there's more money involved, there's more time involved. Making more small things, it's got to be the right game with the right investment. And for Rare, it's got to be something that matters and something that really is different and a game the world doesn't have. Yeah. You know, that would be my pitch to you. Yeah, yeah. Sea of Thieves, there was no other game like Sea of Thieves when we made Sea of Thieves. Right. And Rare doesn't want to just always be looking back and making sequels and reboots of their previous things, right? I mean, Rare Replay was a, a yeah. real, like, what I felt was the right celebration of heritage. And then you've got something like Battletoads, which we talked about earlier, which, you know, I think is a really nice way to reboot a beloved franchise. Totally. And then we've got Sea of Thieves, and then we've got other ideas. So awesome. it's a good time to be at Rare.